Hi, a while ago I published a video on YouTube entitled Don't Get Fooled Because They Say It's Refurbished. And it was about buying new tone master stations on eBay that sellers say are refurbished, but are they really? I sort of went on and on in that video about the difference between refurbished and used. And a couple days ago, as I was doing my afternoon search through eBay looking for new tone things, I ran across this particular listing which actually made me laugh out, out loud. Cindy said, what are you laughing at? What'd you find this time? Because I run across this periodically where people are just outrageous about what it is they have for sale. So what we're looking at here is a screenshot of a new tone IM203 and the title for it is new tone IM203 203 refurbished intercom master and now I have purposely framed this so you can't see who the seller is because I don't think it's fair or necessarily polite to uh, point out this person this is someone who sells on eBay all the time under condition it says manufacturer refurbished which is not true because there is no such thing new tone doesn't refurbish refurbished master stations they never did and they never will again because Newtone for the most part is out of the intercom business as near as anyone can tell underneath it where it says manufacturer refurbished it says we repair all intercoms by manufacturer specifications which okay that that could be true uh, that's a lot of work but I suppose is possible and in the picture here in the in the first picture you see it's a picture of a new tone IM203 it's not even an IMA it's an early one so it's just an IM203 and the buy it now price is $299 you know, we'll get back to the price in a minute and then not only do they want nearly $300 for it but they want to charge you $21.95 for shipping on top of it. So let's take a look at this particular IM203 and let's see what ma what manufacturer refurbished actually means to these folks who are selling it. So if we scroll over the picture here and we enlarge it and we can move it around some you can see First we'll look at the face of the unit. So what you're looking at here is, first we'll look at this area here around the volume knob. So it says volume all speakers, and here we have the volume knob, and here we have two probably Sharpie marks from where the previous owner normally would have kept the volume set to all the stations to make it work correctly in their house. And we have Sharpie marks on the faceplate. And then next to the faceplate, if we move it over a little bit, you can see the AM FM tuning dial here in this area and like most 203s the tuning dial has yellowed and discolored when this was brand new this was crystal clear and now it's turned yellow and discolored because that's what tends to happen to these it's a common problem on 203s it happens to all of them sooner or later but in this particular case it had nothing's been done to it there are ways to improve it it will never be crystal clear again but Come on, that's not really refurbished. And if we scroll up a little bit in this first picture, I think we can see here at the top, right up here, we have what clearly to me looks like some residue from some sort of tape that something was taped to the front of it and the little silver accent ridge around the, the grill area is worn away. And down here at the bottom, which I think you can see, down here we have all kinds of crud that's built up on the black part of the faceplate. It's either dust or lint or other residue from it being in someone's house since the early or late 1970s most likely because it's an IM203. So on first glance not looking so much refurbished to me. You know it's not horrible. It would clean up. It's certainly nothing's much been done to it. And so let's go ahead and switch to another picture here. So I'll go down here. And now we have an overall view of the back of the set. And again, if we enlarge it, let's just start over here in the corner. It's actually, it turns out, if you look at product label, we'll scan over here just a little bit. If you look at the product label right here, which is on upside down, but that's not the seller's fault. That's just the way Newton does things sometimes. It's actually an IMA203, so they have the model number wrong, which, you know, it, it, I guess it's a lot to ask for to read the label before you make the listing. If we go down here and look at the bottom, 
Uh, that's even a better picture now. So if we go down here, here we have the terminal board assembly, which is where all the wires from the remote speakers connect up. And if we look down here on the bottom edge of the faceplate, you've got the one mounting bracket there and the second mounting bracket here. And if we look down here, you can clearly see that it's all dirty. In fact, here we've got fingerprints where the dirt has been smudged away by it being handled. So it's not really so much refurbished. I guess this particular seller, they didn't even have any Windex or paper towels lying around and didn't feel compelled to even try to clean up the back of the unit at all. And uh, that doesn't hardly seem refurbished to me at all. It really looks like somebody took it out of a house and took some pictures of it and decided to list it on eBay. So if we sort of scan over here a little bit. Let's take a look at the, the sort of meat and potatoes of the whole thing. We'll zoom in here. And now we have a nice close-up view of the actual circuit board, uh, an IMA203. It really only has one single circuit board, which is this assembly here in the middle of the set. And this board gives you, it's your power supply, it's your AM FM radio tuner, it's a little bit to make the intercom work. Uh, an IMA203 was the entry level builder radio intercom of the mid 70s and or late 70s because it's an IMA and these boards were actually made by a Japanese company for Newtone and they're very similar in some ways to what you would find in a mid or late 70s AM FM pocket transistor radio with a little bit of modification done to it to make it into an intercom system also. So what we can see here, the things you want to look at to see if it's been refurbished or not, the way you have to look at this is, let's just make a general assumption that this set was manufactured in 1978 because that makes the math easy. So if it was made in 1978, it's 40 years old. Even with nominal use, sets that are 40 years old need some actual refurbishment to make them reliable and last another 25, 30 years before anything else might go wrong with them. And what we see here is, is we have all of these blue cylindrical devices here, 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 here. Uh, there's probably one under the strap that you can't see. And those are all your standard electrolytic capacitors. Electrolytic capacitors are what typically fail first in a 40 year old set. And if you're going to tell someone that you've refurbished refurbished it, all of those should be changed. That's part of refurbishing a set. If it's not broken, which it possibly does work, it looks like they actually have it connected up to a transformer. If we zoom out here a little bit, you can see they have a bench transformer right here and it's connected up to the built-in transformer because it uses an odd voltage and so they have it powered up so it most likely works it looks like they probably have an antenna connected to it so it probably does function but if it's going to continue to function if you're going to sell it to someone as a refurbished unit i think there would be an expectation that it's going to last for more than i don't know 30 feet or 30 minutes, something like that. And to refurbish a unit like this, a lot of these components should be replaced. If you don't replace them and they begin to fail, they may already have begun to fail where there are some subtle problems with how the whole thing works. But if you don't replace them, eventually they're gonna fail altogether and that will cause other problems. The primary problems on IMA203s other than failing capacitors are problems with the tuner because, especially the FM tuner, because the FM tuner comprises probably 80% of this whole board. And these are terribly unpopular to work on, let's put it that way, because it's one board and on the back side of it, which you can't see in the picture, but I think I'll show you when, when I get down on the, on the screen here, it's a difficult unit to disassemble, it's a difficult unit to identify parts on, and actually Newtown didn't really repair a lot of these, and I'll show you how Newtone had, would have dealt with this if it was back in the day when these were still in production. So what we have here is we have a seller that says it's refurbished. Let's go back to the main screen if we can. Okay, so now we're back. We'll zoom out here a little bit. Try to keep the anonymity going here. We don't want to. We don't want to call anyone out. But um, it, it manufacturer refurbished. I I don't think so. It, uh, how about uh, used? Used would be a better description for this. And I don't think it's worth three hundred dollars. So I went back and looked, 
and the closest price sheet I could find to this was a 1983 price sheet. And in 1983, an IMA 203 cost, the list price was $270. The dealer price, dealer price would be 30% off list. So back in the old days, Newtown used to have three price levels or three price guides. There was the distributor price list. That's how much somebody like me would pay to buy it directly from Newtown. Then there was the dealer price list. The dealer price list dealer price was approximately 30 percent above my cost and that's what you would typically sell it to a contractor or a builder or somebody like that too or if you had a, a do-it-yourself a homeowner and they were building a brand new house and they were buying a lot of things from you intercom central vacuum doorbells medicine cabinets exhaust fans you would give them dealer price because they were spending a lot of money with you and you wanted to give them a break and you wanted to get all the business you could from them so you'd sell it to them at dealer price and then there was the pink sheet the pink sheet was list price and this is kind of a joke in 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 the business here that hardly anybody pays list you know everybody gets something off list price just like today you know you got list price and then you got uh, you got street price which is what you find it for on amazon or online somewhere so nobody pays List. So 1983 list price was 270. Dealer price was 180. They want a hundred dollars, more than a hundred dollars over dealer price for something that's 40 years old that's basically used. It's not right. It's a it's a joke. They're taking advantage, and they didn't even make the most minor of effort to try to clean it up a little bit. So at least it looked like somebody cleaned it up and it was presentable. It's basically a used unit. I can go in the back of the storeroom and I can pull a set off the shelf right now and it would look very much like this and I would never sell that to someone we just don't sell used units we sell refurbished units we actually rebuild them and clean them up and make them look as close to brand new as humanly possible because we want our customers to be happy with things so you have to beware of what you find online because if you're looking at something like this and they want three hundred dollars for it it's it's not a good deal it's not a good deal at all. So let me get you a, uh, let me, let me uh, pause this here for a second and let's uh, relocate to the little workbench and I'll show you a little bit more about what IMA 203s are about. So I'm on the little workbench here at the office instead of at the shop for a change. And here we have, I just pulled this off the shelf like four minutes after I ended the last segment of this video. And here we have an IMA 203 and you'll notice that it's missing some knobs, but the general overall condition of this one is very much like the one we just looked at on eBay. You can see here how it's all, the dial has discolored. This one's probably actually worse than the one on eBay because you can't really see, hardly see it at all. And we've got all kinds of crud and stuff built up on the grill because this has been sitting on the back shelf for a long time. Here we have some vintage dust on it. And if we flip it around, you can see it looks just like the other one. It's probably actually in worse shape because this is primarily a parts unit. The uh, transformer here has been robbed out of it at some point for to repair someone else's because that's a point that can fail. And if we look down here on the bottom of the faceplate, I think you can see right here, it's pretty much just as dirty as the one on eBay. So this is just basically your bog standard used IMA 203. Look, the label is even upside down like the other one. So that must have been the way they did it back in the day. But this is, I don't even know where this came from. This was manufactured in 1979. And it's just sort of a dead standard used IMA 203. I guess if I put a transformer back in it and some knobs, maybe I could get 300 bucks for it. What do you think? I'll tell you what, if somebody wants it, I'll cut you a really good deal. I'll sell it to you for 200. How about that? That would be something. So how did we deal with these? I talked about how these are kind of a pain to repair. And if we go ahead and uh, take the one screw out that's holding the chassis in still, like that, if we lift this out, you can see the chassis just comes out of the faceplate. And the thing that makes this a pain in the neck to work on is this dial cord arrangement for the tuner. So here's your tuning pointer right here, which is a little hard to see, but I'll make it easier in a second. So this is your tuning pointer 
and it's got this long string that starts at the pointer, it goes around this bushing, it goes around another bushing, it goes around the tuning wheel, it goes around more bushings, it's got this spring for tension and it wraps around this. And this is all, dial cords are a pain in the neck. Uh, this is a fairly complicated one in how it uh, winds its way around. It's, it's wound around the tuning shaft here. Uh, so when you turn it, the pointer moves around and around like that and the tuning wheel turns and the tuning wheel is connected to the variable condenser on this side of the board which is the heart of an AM FM tuner. When you want to replace all of the capacitors which we talked about on the one we were looking at in the video what you have to do to get to these you have to desolder all of these and if you have to do a tuner repair you have to locate your defective part and remove them and because of the way these were made there's a lot of Sometimes in tuner designs, they'll use sort of a wax substance and they'll, it gets flowed down around some of the components that can, be, that can become what's called microphonic, which means they can pick up stray physical noise, like if you tap on it, it will pick it up and you hear that in the speaker. So they flow a wax type material around those kind of components to deaden them. So when you tap on it, it doesn't make any noise. Anyway. When you have to work on one of these to get to this side of the board you have to remove the dial cord and the tuning wheel from the back of the set because it covers up a lot of this and then you have this array of colored wires here from the plug connector and jumpers across the board because this is how the board gets connected to the switches and other things in the set and this is all a giant pain in the neck to work on so how was this dealt with when these were newer well the way they were dealt with was you would you would order from Newtone one of these what do we have here we have Newtone Scoville division factory approved replacement parts in a real factory bag and you would order one of these from the parts department and this one has a tag on it for some reason. Take that off. And what you would get is a replacement chassis. Now this one I think has been opened because the tuning wheel has been removed. So let me look over here a minute. And here's a better example of one here. Again, factory replacement part in a factory bag. And when you take this one out, this is a complete chassis and if you had a problem because it has the dial face on it still and the tuning wheel and the dial cord are intact and if you had a problem with an IM or an IMA203 and if you looked in the service manual what it would tell you to do is you could do some basic troubleshooting and repair if you really were hardcore and wanted to but for the most part what Newtone really wanted you to do would be to order up one of these from the parts department and you just just take the customer's bad one and put it over there and you put this one in, in in its place and you're all set and good to go. So that's the way it was dealt with. These are kind of a pain in the neck to work on which could be re the reason why the uh, good folks on eBay that want 300 bucks for theirs don't want to fool around with it because it's a fair amount of work. Working on one of these is complicated and in some respects can take more time than you know a 303 or a 406 which are models that are made up comprised of an assembly of circuit boards that are relatively easy to work on and get out of the set. So these are just kind of a pain in the neck. There you have it. That's my take on what you need to look for and consider if you're looking on eBay and you think you're going to score a really good great deal on some refurbished, refurbished in quotes, Newtone Intercom Master Station. You have to look at the pictures really, really carefully. I look at pictures all the time. I look at the descriptions that people write and I realize that a lot of people, you know, they're sellers and they're trying to make a few bucks and all that sort of stuff. But on the other hand, a lot of these people that are selling this stuff, they got no idea what they're what 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 they're what they've got they've got no idea what it's worth they got no idea what the condition is they're just trying to paint a, a, a rosy picture and you're the one that ends up with the problem and sure maybe if it doesn't work or something happens maybe ultimately maybe you get your money back but it's a big giant hassle and why go through all that Anyway, I hope you found this interesting and helpful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube because that always helps. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell or on the wheel, put in your email address, and every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.